your, your, the exhibition that's um, this Christmas, because you have one sort of every Christmas, don't yes, you? Yes, we do. <laughs> we uh, we specialise at Christmas time um, in something with a Christmas flavour, usually a, a biblical theme. We've had Noah's, Noah's Ark and Daniel and the Lion's Den. Uh, last year it wasn't very Christmassy, but it was very popular. It was on pigs. But this year we've decided to do Aesop's Fables. And these are classic tales of the lion and the mouse. There's two. There's one here by Fred Harris, a self-taught artist, a London artist, and one here by a more intimate painter called uh, David Cheapen. See, and beautiful, beautiful work there. Because we, we use the word primitive artists. In fact, it's, it's the wrong words to it, use, it isn't is it? It is, in effect, but uh, just a bit further along, when we come to a couple of more p paintings, I'll show you what I do mean by primitive. Mm. Beautiful pictures there, but again... You can just get a sense of the great variety of subjects and approaches for all these artists when you look at how another artist has approached the same fables. We're well, here again. We have a, a self-taught artist of a very, very sophisticated um, technical quality called Peter Lawman. And um, he, is, he searches for his subject matter into the realms of fantasy, uh, such as... Um, nymphs and satires and, 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 and goblins and elves. And, and this, of course, is Metamorphosis, which is one of the Aesop's fables. Mm. Yeah. I think my favourite one is uh, the cook next to that, because this is the old story, what are the, a girl in the hand is better than two in the bush. Uh, what, a, bird in the, a bird in the hand, <laughs> yes. two in the bush. Well, of course, this is Beryl, our favourite, uh, well, I would say Britain's most favourite painter. Now, the, the public love to take the Beryl cook in a big way and well-deserved because she's a marvellous, jolly painter who really gets everybody smiling. And she's got a great quality to her work. She's a self-taught artist, a genuine self-taught artist. And humour is an important factor, isn't it, in a lot of uh, the work of artists? Well, like we at Portal Gallery have always specialised in, in, in having a humorous and sometimes idiosyncratic and sometimes um, completely loony type of element coming into our paintings, because why, why, why not? I mean, it's, it's, it, it, paintings are in a, a form of entertainment, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. Decoration and entertainment. Yeah. Well, I think um, my favourite of all these, and I believe this is a favourite artist of yours, is this wonderful Lloyd. Well, that mis Mr. James Lloyd unfortunately died about ten years ago. He was the, I would say, the, the grandfather of, of British genuine primitive artists. He was, he was, he was a Yorkshireman countryman, um, lived right in the middle of the country amongst animals, and he'd, he'd done several jobs throughout his life, but he st at, towards his middle age, he taught himself to paint by using a, a technique which we call pointillism. Dot after dot after dot. That's the way he prepared this, this very grotesque horse, but he was known as Dotty Lloyd, and in fact, Ken Russell made a film about him, as I mentioned yes, before. Yes, the Dotty World, yes. <laughs> and you see, there's a lot of skill. There's a lot of skill in that painting. And in, in even the sort of simplest paintings, as, um, people have developed their own skills in different ways, haven't they? Yes, well, this gentleman, uh, and he was a, a, a fine old English gentleman. He came from Bedfordshire, named A.W. Cheshire. I never even knew his first name. He always used to refer to me as Mr. Lister, and I referred to him as Mr. Cheshire, which was very, very formal. He, in his younger days drove steam traction engines. His father taught him to drive. He met with an unfortunate accident, accident at the age of about 40, but then he retired and started to paint, and he recorded the entire history of British farming, steam farming, which is quite unique. Yes. Mm. Absolutely lovely, lovely pictures. But moving on to the next one, we're back with the, the sense of humour again, I, aren't we? Well, I mean, what yes. happens to these artists when you first get to know them? Do they just walk into your gallery and you, you discover them? Um, in the past 20 years, we rarely go out to look for artists. I, it's not because we're lazy, but because artists get to know where, where the centre for their type of work is. And every gallery, of course, specialises in their own type of work. We do specialise in self-taught. And these, these slightly idiosyncratic paintings. Now, this, this, this young man is called James Granger. He's very, very funny indeed, because he usually puts vicars into his paintings, as you can see. This is the battle over the last cucumber sandwich. Here you'll notice the cucumber sandwich impaled on the, on, on the fork there. A marvellously funny painting. And, 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 and I'm told that uh, uh, um, Miles Kington is doing a book about, about his work. But do you feel as if you've had to campaign to get, say, perhaps the critics or the people who uh, go in more for the sort of classical art to, uh, to see the qualities in these paintings? We, um, we don't seem to really 
get on very, very well with the critics. I, I, I must exclude one or two of them, but generally speaking, they take art terribly, terribly serious. Now, I'm also a musician. I'm a jazz musician. And I improvise. And I don't think critics do appreciate improvisation. I like to feel that somebody who's painting is painting from the guts just as much as painting from the head. And I think that the critics prefer paintings from the head. And, well, here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Here's a, a self-taught artist from um, Gloucestershire called P.J. Crook, a lady who is now getting to be very, very well known because she's become an original in a, a, and a bit of a legend in her own lifetime already, and although she's so young. I mean, she paints th three-dimensional paintings. They're almost like sculpture. She, she actually invented this idea of painting on the frame and making it into a kind of a, a peep show. And, and this is a new painting um, from her recent exhibition, well, the exhibition which is on currently at the Portal Gallery. Very effective, isn't it? Yeah. But again, it's a contrast ah, with... Now, this yeah. isn't a painting no, at all, no. but I love it. Well, he, he's, <laughs> a, he's a naive. He, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a real Lancashire chap, this man. In fact, it reminds me very much of George Formby. And uh, he came to us one day. He said he'd retired. He'd, he'd been working a, a, in a shoe factory. And he took hundredweights of, of, of old rags and boiled them in the copper, as he said. And he said... I don't know whether you'd call me an artist, he said, but he said, I, I get bits of cloth and I stitch them together and I make pictures. So, of course, this is, this is the result. And this is a very funny one because it's about Her Majesty's prison band in Brixton. I don't know where these, uh, the deck chairs come in, but it, it's lovely, isn't it? Eric Lister, thanks very much for just giving us a tiny flavour of the excellent artwork that oh, there is in pleasure. this country great for all your work over the last 25 years. <laughs> Thank you.